to watch. Not his first start, but his first big start. It's a little bit different when the Knowles are on the other side. Well, this Florida State comes team comes in here ranked in the top 10 in 11 different categories nationally. With a 377 batting average is number two overall. Yamez Ross, the sophomore center fielder out of Melbourne, Florida, has put on quite a show in that leadoff spot. First pitch he swings at, ground ball out to shortstop. Colby Shelton makes the play, one down. As we look at this Florida State lineup, again, hitting 377 as a team. They average 12 runs per game. Tibbs has just been killing it. There's not a weak spot, at least in terms of the early numbers in this group. No, offensively, I mean, they're top 10 in the country in runs. Tibbs a returner, Smith a returner. In fact, the top four in this order returners from last year. Cam Smith, 6'3", 229-pound sophomore at a Lake Worth, Florida. Leads the country, averaging 2.2 hits per game. Fouls that one back, and he's behind 0-2. He already has seven three-hit games this year. He almost hit 500 so far this year. 492 <laughs> coming in for Smith. Days alive, 0 and 2. For Philpot, I think the changeup is probably his best secondary pitch. He throws the slider more than the fastball to right handed hitters, but the changeup gets more swing and miss than either of the two. Swing and a miss. Throw down to first. We'll get him out. So two down after the strikeout. So it's rare to throw right-handers change up for right-handed pitchers. But when it's this good, I like to see it. He didn't throw it once. He threw it three times in a row. So got out in front, kept going to it. Smith couldn't read the spin or the velocity difference right there. Two quick outs for the freshman here in the first. James Tibbs, the third, steps in the right fielder. He looks at a strike. 404 average on the year for the junior out of Marietta, Georgia. Led the team last year with a 338 batting average and 17 home runs. And that one just off the plate, one and one. Tibbs well, already with seven homers. No, he is ready to go. Boy, if he can live right there at the knees, it's going to be a long night at the plate. Yeah, that's who he is. I mean, you see more guys, especially more high-velocity guys, that use the top part of the zone, more four-seam fastballs. Phil Potts really not that guy. He's trying to use the bottom part of the zone, let the arm side run take over. Elevates one, try to get him to chase. Now full at three and two. Except when he does that. <laughs> Low, 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 then try to elevate intentionally. The take. After the strikeout, now a walk to Tibbs with two outs. Jaime Ferrer to step into the plate now, hitting 315. And yeah, Tibbs just a professional hitter. I mean, worked it all the way up to a 3 2 count. Those velocities probably not going to beat him. Saw spin early enough on the slider, and he's the first base runner of the night for the Knowles. Herrera, the junior from Puerto Rico. First pitch he sees to third base. They'll go to second to get the out, and the inning is ready. But things will start with Cade Curl in the second baseman. Cade off to a good start, hitting 326 for the Gators, who come in 10 and 5. Well, this is a club that went 54 and 17 last year, 20 and 10 in conference play, but. Took it all the way to the College World Series final series. Well, there was some high power in Omaha in that championship series last year with LSU and the Gators going at it. A lot of guys we'll see in the big leagues in the not too distant future for sure. Curlin, the sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. Boy, a big cut on the 92 mile an hour fastball. And that's kind of top end right there for Armstrong. He'll average about 90 with the fastball, but even with that velocity, still throws the fastball a fair amount. Three in a row there right is. there. Yep, 92 miles an hour, and down goes Curland for out number one. Yeah, I got the first pitch swinging from Curland on the ball that was probably down and out of the zone. So the minute that Armstrong got ahead, came back with a fastball, elevate, elevate, three pitches, and a strikeout for the first out. And here comes Jack Caglione, the Gator first baseman. First pitch he sees, lifts it in the air. 
And caught by the shortstop, Alex Lodis. Boy, one pitch and one out against Caglione. That is a major victory for whoever's on the bump. Yeah, I mean, it's you can get him out, it's good to start. You get him out with one, and that was a fastball to get in on Caglione's hands. Two quick outs right here for Armstrong in the first. And he'll face Luke Heyman, the catcher. Luke already with four home runs on the year. The sophomore out of Longwood, Florida. Went to Lake Brantley High School. Was an all-SEC freshman team member last year. 51 starts amongst catcher, first base, and also in the designated hitter role. Hit 314 with a dozen homers last year. 17 multi-hit games. And that one stays up in the zone. A nice crowd tonight filling in at Condren Family Ballpark. That one is slapped past the third baseman, Cam Smith. It'll get all the way in the corner. And Heyman will end up at second base with his fifth double of the year. Well, Luke Kamen can do this now. He can turn a fastball around. Fastball they're trying to go in, and you can see that leak out over the middle of the plate. The glove of Jackson West moves middle. When that happens, it goes right into the hitting zone of Luke Kamen. Gets out in front of it, hooks it down the line. Cam Smith can't get to it. The Gators have a two-out double. And this is who you want at the plate with a runner on base for sure. Colby Shelton, the sophomore to Lexington, South Carolina, an Alabama transfer. First pitch he sees, lifts it in the air. Deep to right, it is caught at the wall by James Tibbs. I'll be heading over to Tuscaloosa for a big one as Tennessee comes to the capstone. As we get set start here for, at the top of the second. Well, good start for both those teams, Dave. Alabama's off to a great start. Remember, Alabama lost both Colby Shelton and Luke Holman and is off to 16 and one start. Swing and a miss for Drew Ferro, the second baseman. He's hitting 390. That one sails off the plate, one and two. Ferro with one homer. Leads the team, though, with those nine doubles to his credit. Bouncer back up the middle. Colby Shelton makes a strike over to Caglione, and that'll be out number one. Here's a designated hitter, Marco Dinges, coming to the plate. Another guy in this lineup with a four in front of his batting average. There are four players in this lineup that possess 400 or better batting averages. Dinges looks at ball number one. To short again. Shelton long throw, not in time. <laughs> Dinges might have been a little early on the stay safe side, but trying to sell it. I always love that. Guys calling themselves safe right when they hit the bag. This is pretty good by Colby Shelton now. Because he's got to go deep. Momentum's taking him the other way. There's really not enough time to set the the right foot, so you got to get as much on it. It is dead on line. Caglione is gonna go as far out to get it as anybody. Yeah, I think that front foot just got there, but Shelton turned what looked like a no-doubt single into a pretty close play at first base. Daniel Cantu, the first baseman. Glides into the batter's box, hitting 333 on the year. 6'3", 220-pounder out of Jacksonville, Florida. Transfer from South Florida. And played a bunch for South Florida. Started 168 games at the 178 he played in over three years. Yeah, for this Florida State lineup, you've got four that came back from last year. So Ross, Smith, Tibbs, Ferrer to start. And then five transfers. 
from different places, but a very different looking lineup than it was for the Knowles last year. Boy, look at all the new names for Link Jarrett that he brought in. He hit the portal, I would say, about as hard as anybody did in the offseason. There's ball four. That is the second walk of the game for Alex Philpot. You know, interesting as you look at Kevin O'Sullivan over there, Selly's trying to grind out the regional, the super regional, and then the College World Series. Of course, Florida State had their streak 40 years of going to postseason baseball snap last year, but that actually getting for him on the mound so far. And obviously five of the nine in this lineup weren't wearing this uniform last year. So two on. Alex Lodis, the shortstop. Of course, another one of those transfers. He came from North Florida where he just tore it up at the plate last year as a freshman. Put up some staggering numbers. Set a North Florida freshman home run record last year with 16 long balls, 63 runs batted, went, uh, batted in, was a first team all A Sun performer. Fouls that off, one and two, the count with one down. For the freshman Phil Pot so far, I've been impressed because it, it is any of three pitches. In any count, I know he's walked two. The single he gave up really was was just a ground ball that was hit in the exact in the right place. But he's got confidence in all three so far. Fouls that off. I think he's got most confidence in that one, in the changeup, back to back against the right-hander again right here. He did that to Camp Smith three straight times in the first inning for a strikeout. Buries that one. Heyman behind the plate keeps it close enough. Everybody stays at their respective bag. Lodi's hit 306. Talked about those 16 home runs. He had a couple of triples, 14 doubles. How about his first collegiate hit? Was a game tying home run in the season opener. Good way to get it started. <laughs> Welcome to Division One baseball. This isn't that hard. I'm going to hit 16 for you, my freshman year. Has three homers this year. Here's the payoff. Off the plate. And now they are loaded for the nine hole hitter, Jackson West. And if there has been an issue, KP, as a whole, the numbers. For Florida on the mound have not been very good, not been very Florida-like, I should say. 5-4-3 ERA. They've given up 79 earned runs. That ERA is 116th in Division I baseball, and they've allowed nine-plus runs in five games this year. Well, I think the other thing, I mean, they've walked 67 guys in 131 innings coming in, so they're walking over five per nine as a club. And that's going up tonight. Some of that, and I think a lot of that, is youth. That should get better as the year goes on. But And the freebies just come around to get you. Fastball. And therefore, strike one and one on Jackson West, who's behind the plate tonight. There's a plethora of catchers on this Florida State roster. And they got two Tallahassee kids that didn't start at Florida State. West, a Tallahassee kid. Drew Ferrara, ta Drew Ferro, a Tallahassee kid, both started in different spots, came back via the transfer portal. There's a strike two and two. West didn't necessarily agree, but he's going to have to stand in there with a two and two count. There's Fisher Jamison already up here in the top of the second inning. Lifted in the air out to center field. Jalen Guy. Makes the play. That should be good enough to get the run home as Dingus will score. And Daniel Cantu hustles over to third base. So he's in there safely. Runners at second and third, but two down now. But a sacrifice fly and an RBI for Jackson West. Puts the Seminoles up one to nothing. 
You take that one from your night hole, hit it right there. Bases loaded, just get us one however you do. Fly ball not only deep enough to score the run, but deep enough to advance everybody. Probably a situation where that throw should go to second base. Throw goes to second base. At least you keep Lodi standing at first. Oh, and that one is kicked by the second baseman, Kate Kerland. And two runs will score on the two-out error. It is 3-0 Florida State. And that, that's one that Curlin's got to make. Watch him go backhand right there. And, and he's got plenty of time. Even if he wants to get around it, he does. Got under the glove, and it looked like he hit his right foot. I love the aggressiveness of Lodice on second base. Because that, at least off the bat, looks like a routine ground ball in the infield. And the minute it hits off his foot, Lodice didn't break stride around third. He comes around to score. The Knowles had two unearned here and three total in the second. And again, the walks coming back to hurt the Gator staff. Cam Smith with an 18 game hit streak on the line. Smith started 51 games at third base last year for the Knowles. Was one of the highly touted shortstops coming out of high school. Finished up with 12 homers and eight doubles last year and five triples to his credit. Go back to first, closer that time around. I thought it was interesting talking to Kevin O'Sullivan this week, and everybody talks about Caglion on the mound and Caglion at the plate. He was talking a lot about Jack Caglion defensively at first base and how it impacts the game, how it gives his infielders a lot more confidence, not only throws across, across the infield, but there's no quicker way to make a tag than a, a left-handed first baseman. I mean, the glove just gets down that much quicker, and it's a huge target for everybody else. What he was saying was it's going to be hard to take him off the field at any point this year. Yeah, and, and some of it, and we'll see what happens over the next few weeks, is he has been their best weekend starter, and it's not even, it's not really close. And so we'll see if they start to bump him up on the weekend. Yeah, he, it, Sully kind of mentioned maybe toying with that and pushing up his start. He's been a Sunday guy where he has settled in. Part of the reason was is because you could get him on the field at first base on a Friday and a Saturday, not have to worry about it. You put him on a Friday, then you got to throw him back at first base on a Saturday when maybe you might want a day of rest. Yeah, Dave, this just you're not used to seeing this from Florida. Now, now we're three weeks into the season, so it, this is not the time to, to jump to conclusions, but still... The weekend starters outside of Cag Leon haven't been great. I think with Peterson, you, you understand there's going to be growing pains. I also think the numbers with Fisher are a little bit misleading. He's only walked three or four guys. He's just given up a lot of extra base hits. That should even out over the course of the year. Well, Barry's another one down in the dirt. And it's full of three and two. And I think this is Phil Potts' last pitch regardless. If, if he gets him great, then that's it. And, in this case, if Smith reaches, I think Kevin O'Sullivan goes and gets him. Eighth pitch of this at bat. That's low, and he's walked him. So first and second with two outs, and let's see if Sully comes popping out of that dugout. Easiest to just watch the glove. Watch the glove, and if it comes back, and for Heyman right there, trying to make it look a little bit better. May have missed a little bit down, may have missed a little bit in, but... At the end, it's the third walk of the inning, fourth walk of the game for the freshman Philpot, who showed you things that I, I think you like. But then, obviously, you put four guys on. But slider heavy, especially when he faces right-handers. Slider heavy when he faces lefties. We'll see a bunch of them. First pitch in there for a strike to James Tibbs. The right fielder walked his first time up. Seven home runs leads the Florida State team. 
Ground ball sharply hit this time fielded by Curland. And a quick two pick. Ten from the SEC for the top five so far. Three from the ACC. Good to see Clemson back in the mix. Clemson back in there. Big weekend for Duke last weekend, too. Took oh. two out of three on the road at Wake Forest. I think that was an eye opener for a lot of folks. That Duke is again for real. <laughs> then, as uh, college baseball has a way of doing, they got shut out at home by Ryder tonight. Tough, tough game. Armstrong working here in the bottom of the second inning. Ty Evans, the right fielder, 327 on the year. Two and two the count. Ty Evans out of Auburndale, Florida. Boy, he busted onto the scene at the College World Series, KP. Made the all-tournament team. And that's a base hit in the left field. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's like tower power when Evans gets it. You just got to get it. You're right. At the end of the year last year, Evans really had it going. This one, forcing fastball, even got in on his hands a little bit. You can see the strength get, get enough of the barrel to it. Just get it over Lodis's head at shortstop, second hit of the game. For the Gators. Yeah, Evans with those five home runs at the College World Series. That was a College World Series record at 400. That one's out in front of Jackson West, but not far enough for Evans to scoot down to second base. Tyler Shell not the left fielder at 288. Senior out of Lake City, Florida. Now in his second year with the Gators, grounds this one to third. Slow roller, scooped by Smith, throw over to first, nicely done. We'll get Evans down to second base, but one out. Well, we talked with Link Jarrett this week, and, and the one thing he talked about with his infield is you got three different guys that have played shortstop really their entire year. Cam Smith having to learn third base a little bit more, low dice obviously. Low dice, excuse me, at shortstop, and then Faro with the move to second. Like Jared, a former middle infielder, knows how to teach that infield position. It was well done right there by Smith. Dale Thomas, the third baseman, stepping into the plate. Yeah, it was interesting talking to him. He says, you know, I want to go, but I want to recruit as many shortstops as I can, and I'll figure out where to play them. Yeah, and that includes the outfield. I mean, it, it's, it's a pretty good plan that a lot of coaches are using right now. How about Link Jarrett is still the all-time assist leader in NCAA baseball. <laughs> Four-year starter, two-year All-American, 802 career assists at Florida State. That ball's lifted in the air out to center field. Ross is there to make the catch. No tag, so two down, runner at second base now for the Gators. I know he basically, Link Jarrett, just walked across the street to play his college ball, went to Florida High, which is right there, basically on the campus of Florida State. And was one heck of a player. It was interesting hearing you guys talk about uh, how to handle your hair at this point in your life. That was a fun well, conversation I got to be a part of <laughs> yesterday. I know that one caught you off guard a little bit. I, I... <laughs> I know. Link, good slider to start right there. Link took the step and went high and tight. He went no guard and took it all off. And it, it's only a matter of time before I decide to do that. And so I, I just wanted his, I wanted his opinion on it as to when he did it. And the thought. Well, he's got a guy for you when you go back to Tallahassee. So you'll be all set up next time you head down to. Uh, North Florida, he's got a guy for you. So I'm anxious to see how that all plays out. As Dale Thomas behind 0-2 with two outs. Armstrong gets his second strikeout of the game, and it ends the second inning. This club, work in progress. He's not a very patient man, though. He can say the word, but I don't think that really is how he operates. <laughs> no, but... 
he did say, I, I don't think it's entirely unexpected. Um, when you have this many, this many freshmen that are going to fill important roles, I mean, one is, is on the weekend rotation, one started today, many in the bullpen. Um, I think it'd be an anomaly if they come out and throw really well at the beginning, but he does like the potential of what he's got. The thought is, as the year goes on, it gets it gets even better, and that's a quick three-pitch strikeout right there to start the third. Jaime Ferrer is retired for the first out. It's such a different angle for Jamison. I mean, it's almost directly over the top, and then you just don't see as many guys throw from that slot anymore. Good breaking ball right there that Ferrer can't hold up. Three pitches and a strikeout to start the third. That ball is barrel back up the middle and a base hit for Drew Ferro. That one is bobbled, and Ferro gets home safely to second base. Good hustle. We talked about the transfer, and his his dad wore that same uniform. Adam Ferro was middle infielder for Florida State. Played with him a little bit in the minor leagues with the Brewers, and you can see just enough. That was pretty clean. Yeah. Not much of a bobble to get to it, and the throw was good. It's just in the right spot. Ferro taking a chance right there with one out, and he finds himself on second base. Boy, a little check swing. Ground ball out to short. Shelton comes up firing. Nice little pick over there by Caglione. Now we get Ferro over to third base. This is one of the things we were talking about. Caglione over at first base to where he just he saves outs during the course of it. Obviously the ability to do that. But then the high throw. With the reach that he's got, the ability to go down the first baseline or into right field makes it just a little bit more comfortable for all the infielders. Sharply hit past Cags at first base, and that'll get the fourth run home of the game for the Florida State Seminoles here in the top of the third inning. We're getting a look That's... at why this team is just crushing baseballs right now. Offensively, the numbers have been off the roof, but go back to Ferro taking second base on the ball that looked like it was it was going to be a single. He takes second base with one out, advances on the slow ground ball, and then one pitch, a single right there for Cantu, and the Knolls add another one. So Lodi swings and misses. Alex. Walked and scored his first time up. He set a North Florida freshman record with those home runs last year of 16. His 63 RBIs were a freshman record, and he also set a run scored record for freshmen. That one's fouled straight back. Think about it. Florida State's going to have him for a couple of years. Swing and a miss down in the dirt. And that'll be out number three. But the Seminole, obviously last year, fantastic season. Wish you could bring that team back, but you can't. So you got to put some new pieces in. Talk me through this team and how you feel about them here. I know we're only 15 and a half games into the season, but what are your thoughts about this group? Um, you know, I think offensively, I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be good. And defensively, um, we've been really good the entire year. Um, I think what's hurting us right now is uh, some of these young pitchers, the freshmen in particular, you know, we're giving up the beginning and, we certainly didn't help ourselves there. We had, I think we gave up the infield single to six hole, and then uh, we walked uh, can two, and then we had low dice one and two, and walking hams. We had back to back walks after an infield single, and then obviously we had the sack fly to center, and then, you know, we probably should have thrown the ball to second there to keep the double play in order, but we threw it to third. So now two runners in scoring position, and obviously we make the error at second, and, you know, that's kind of what we've been doing right now. But we got to learn to stay out of the beginning for sure. So solely to that, I mean, you're going to have a young pitching staff this year. It's just the way that it's set up, and, and it's inevitable that there's some growing pains that come with it. Um, what, do you, what do you need to see more of out of your freshman on the mound? I think it's uh, – I think 
more than anything else, uh, and Kyle, you'll know this, is they got to learn how to pitch with all three other pitches. And I think what's happened early on here, which we didn't see it quite a whole lot in the fall, is the ability to command their secondary pitches. And um, we're getting better at it. But obviously, you know, getting into predictable fastball counts, you're going to have to have multiple options to go to. And we're getting better at it. It's just that for whatever reason, when the season started, maybe we were trying you know, too hard or maybe pressing a little bit. But, um, you know, other than, you know, other than a couple of walks, you know, I thought, you know, I thought Alex threw the ball good, you know, especially in the first. But, you know, it's just one of those things, being able to minimize the damage. You know, we end up giving up one, don't give up two. If you give up two, try you know, trying to give it a third, but the beginning has been one, the one that's been hurting us the most so far. All right, slowly, you got a good start here at the bottom of third. We'll let you get going. Now you yeah. got two on. Yeah, Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. So, the double by Jalen Guy, who's making a sixth start of the year, the senior from Liberty, the transfer in, doubles down the right field line. Now, Cade Curlin comes to the plate and gets walloped with a pitch. So, first and second, nobody out for the Florida Gators. And Here's the guy you want at the plate, Jack Caglione. Yeah, now you get into the heat of this order. I mean, Caglione, obviously, 30-plus home, home runs last year. He's got five already this year. That'll get a trip to the mound right here, and understandably so for Armstrong, who had been really good through the first two innings. But give up a, a backside ground ball for a double and a hit by pitch on a slider. Mike Posey, first season at Florida State, but no stranger to Link Jarrett. They've known each other for a long time. Previously at Dallas Baptist, and if you followed DBU the last few years, he had some arms. I mean, they were rolling mid-90s, mid-90s out of the bullpen, and I would suspect that you're going to see that before long at Florida State. Well, here is Jack Caglione and, and some of the accolades bestowed upon him. He is a remarkable, remarkable baseball player. I mean, yeah. throw it up to 100 if he needs to. It comes off his bat. 110, 115 miles an hour if you need it. Matter of fact, down at Miami. This one's lifted in the air out to center, but caught there by Ross. Everybody will stay where they are, but to finish that thought, Caglione hit, Caglione hit two balls at Miami that came off his bat at 120 and 122 <laughs> miles an hour. I think you can count on two hands the number of times that happened in the major league level last year in excess of 120. And, and for Caglione, the one thing that stands out for me this year, he walked 17 times total last year and essentially played every day. This year he's already walked 11 times. He's walked five. So the, the selection has been better this year, and the power's still there. Wow. Round ball to second. See if the Seminoles can turn it, wow. and they do. Boy, the Gators get two on, and nobody it was an unbelievable route he took. Got him to the Supers at Starkville. Next year, took him to Omaha. Yeah, and they, they beat the best college team I've ever seen. I mean, Tennessee in 21 was the best, cut 22, I guess, is the best college baseball team I've ever seen. And Notre Dame went in and beat them with an older lineup and didn't really get caught up into to what the environment was right there. He was really only at Notre Dame for two full seasons because the first year was a COVID year. And then he takes him to two supers, obviously goes back to his alma mater. And I think last year has to be just to cross it off, get through the season, figure out what we got to do year. This year they look different. They look way different. We're all gloating. At a 14 and 0 record for them, certainly it's impressive. But talking to you know, as any coach would, he's he's he knows what the warts are. It's full now, three and two. I tell you what, though, you, you you would take warts if you're hitting 377 as a club, and you go Arnold Leiter on the weekend to start, or Leiter Arnold, however they want to do it. But I mean, they've got two real aces on the weekend. I think if there's a question for Florida State right now, it's probably bullpen depth, but you can say that for about any team in the country except Duke right now. Um, they should defend. Obviously, there's plenty of thump there. Plays well to their ballpark. No, I, I really like them. Surprised they're not ranked, Dave. They will be next week. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, it, it is uh, Robert. Satin in that bullpen, the left-hander getting up. I know it's been a uh, probably a, a, a tough few days for the folks at D1 baseball. 
Answering emails and text messages from a few folks. Even family members getting a little angry. Yeah. Kendall. Kind of got a text from his mom this week. Mad that the eggs weren't ranked higher than they were. And, and apparently he's he's had a little bit of uh, feedback from the Seminoles fans. <laughs> yes. Understandably so. Well, Link did tell us, though, in our meetings about some of those things he's a little concerned about. As that one is slapped to the right side. As Ross. Ooh. Close play out there at second base. See the decision by Keg Leon. Let's see if the transfer, if he doesn't have a good handle on it. Because he's got it in plenty of time to try to, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that ball will spin it around in his hand a little bit. And if it is, it's a good decision just to make sure you get the one out. The throw is easier for a left-hander than a right-hander. Right-hander, you got to make sure you clear yourself of that runner. The left-hander, at least, your arm side is on the infield side of the runner. So it makes the throw a little bit easier. But I think in that one, just make sure you get one. If you turn a double play, that's great. But at any level, you don't see a lot of 3-6-3 three, three double plays. That time, Caglione probably had enough time to try it. Just didn't look like he had a good grip on it. Sharply hit by Ross. Grayson Smith up for the Gators as well. The right hander as Cam Smith steps to the plate to finish that throw with Link Jared. A couple of his concerns. They just need to be more solid defensively, and he feels like his pitching is a eight strikeouts, couple of walks. The welcome to the game, and the first guy you get to face is Cam Smith. Cam Smith hitting 484, has an 18 game hit streak on the line. He struck out his first time, walked back in the second. Four homers and 20 runs batted in. Out straight back, one and two. Had 12 home runs last year, most for an FSU freshman since Ryan Malone back in 2004. Actually had a couple of triples in the game against the Gators last year in early May. That one's up, two and two the count. You see a lot of freshmen coming into college throwing splitters. That's what Grayson Smith is right there. If you watch it close enough at home, you can kind of, it's a lot easier to see seams. It almost looks like a knuckleball when it comes out of his hand. That should give it good dance when it gets to home plate and pretty good sink when it starts belt higher a little bit below that. That was it. Got it chopped right in front of the plate, safe at first base. So Cam Smith reaches on a seven-foot single. In front of the catcher, Luke Heyman. And so that extends the streak to 19 games for Cam Smith. Sometimes things are just going right for you. And, and that's the case tonight for Florida State. It, they really haven't hit the ball that hard. I mean, the hardest ball that was hit was Faroe's double in the right center field. But they're figuring out ways to get on, on base. Florida's walked five guys. That's helped a lot so far. Now Cam Smith has hit 19 straight every game so far this year. Lifted in the air off the bat of James Tibbs. It is deep and it's out of here. Tibbs goes yard for a team best eighth time. Left-handed hitters love playing at Florida State because it's short right porch, but it, it it makes no difference where you're playing right here. Tibbs has got power to hit it out anywhere, and watch how sweet this is. There's a splitter that doesn't split. That's the one that starts a little bit higher. You could see the lack of spin when it gets on towards home plate, and Tibbs was sitting, waiting for it, and he got a spot he could drive it out. Eighth home run of the year, and it is all Knowles tonight. Three-run shot for Tibbs. Gives him 29 runs batted in. Oh, no. 
That one's lifted out of play, 0-2 to Ferrer. Ferrer struck out his last time. Check swing, did he go here? And, he... and he'll be tagged out. That'll be the second out of the inning. So Grayson Smith. Will now work to Drew Ferreau, who doubled and scored last inning. Ferreau, the second baseman. Out of Tallahassee, Florida High. Transferred in from Central Florida. He was a freshman All-American at UCF. And this one. Slap past the shortstop, Colby Shelton. So the inning stays alive with two down. Now, Ferro had 15 home runs last year at UCF, and he's only got one this year, but he's now hitting above 400. Fastball, inner part of the zone, hands come in, gets the barrel to it, and a reaction right there, Grayson Smith. Even with kind of that modified shift on right there, when it's hit that hard, it almost has to be right at him. Shelton can't make the play. Ferro is a two-hit night. Marco Dinges steps to the plate now. Dinges is single and scored today, also grounded out. He's up to 4.05 at the plate. Just out of Beekman, New York, but went to East Lake High School in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Transferred in from Tallahassee Community College. Originally committed to Maryland before signing with FSU. Now three and one. Out straight back. Was swing and a miss, and the inning is over. But the Seminoles add the road here in Gainesville. Dave Neal, Kyle Peterson, and Link Jarrett joins us now in that Seminole dugout. And, Coach, obviously first year last year, trying to get it all together, figure things out, how we want to do this. And it seems like you have figured things out to this point. How impressed are you with your club's start to this season? Well, we onboarded 26 players, and that's that's a lot. Probably never have done that. And you have some nine Division One transfers, four junior college players, and then the other half are freshmen. And that makes a difference. And them trying to learn what we're doing within the program, it takes their engagement with what we're doing to allow 26 guys to figure out how we're trying to do things. Hey, Link, Armstrong, I, I know he's got plenty of experience, but not a lot has been as a starter. He established a fastball early. Then he gets three big outs with two pitches to end the last inning. What have you liked from your standpoint? Well, I like the way he's moving the fastball around. He's gone to both sides of the plate. His slider has been really sharp, and he's used his changeup. So when you have that kind of mix and the velocity's been good, I mean, that's, that's a good recipe to have some success. And he didn't ramp up great in the preseason, so the pitch count may not have been where we wanted it in terms of his ability to endure a longer start. But we wanted him to start, gives him a little flexibility with how he warms up, and let him get into this. Now, whether he continues starting for us, I, that remains to be seen. But clearly today it lined up, and it gave him a chance to ease into this outing a little bit, which is always nice as you're trying to build. All right. Link, here you got Florida Gators, your first top 25 team. 
of the season. And then you start ACC play this weekend against Notre Dame. Uh, talk me through your pitching staff and, and how comfortable you feel with that group as you get ready for things to get real serious. Well, Leiter has been exceptional. Jamie Arnold has been great. And Whitaker will move back into Sunday, and he's an experienced bulldog that will pitch. And kind of like Armstrong, a three-pitch mix, competes, controls the running game. So you like that. And then we have some pieces in the bullpen that are effective. Some of them, albeit, are young. They have some pretty good stuff, so I like it. You know, you just hope offensively we continue to grind through at bat. Some of this today was created by the ability to lay off some pitches and draw some walks, and then Tibbs delivered a big blow. Um, so we just have to continue that kind of defense. The fly ball to right was a really nice play. Cam's, Cam's play at third was a beautiful slow roller play, and then you had the big double play. So that was great, and uh, we need to keep doing it. Obviously, <laughs> We need to limit stuff that just happened right here while we're talking. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, we'll let you get going so you can kind of manage some things in that dugout. But, hey, great start. Continued success as we see you down the road. Thank you, guys. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Lake. Well, they get the strike, and strike out, but couldn't get the throw down to second. That was an awkward swing, awkward pit. The whole thing was kind of awkward. I think it was a backup breaking ball that, that Shelton, I, I still think it's it's become – one of the most effective pitches in the game if he can throw it on the inside part of the play. Left on left or right on right because guys just aren't used to seeing it there. And so they, sometimes you get swings like that. Well, catchers aren't used to seeing it there either. And I, I think that's what got West. Pitch count up to 38 for Andrew Armstrong. And Jared said kind of a Swiss Army knife guy for him and this staff. Nice to have guys like him. Using so many different roles. And he's now facing Ty Evans, who singled against him back in the second inning, and it's 3-0 now. Shilna Ch on deck. Another visit from pitching coach Micah Posey. No relation. I had to ask the question when we were on with Link the other day, but anytime you see the last name of Posey at Florida State, you got to ask the question. Buster Posey, former all freshman ACC shortstop. See? Turned into a decent catcher. Did you play shortstop at all, KP, growing up? Dave, you've seen me. You think I played shortstop? <laughs> That's why I asked the question. <laughs> yeah, I, play, I, I knew played the shortstop until I was like 10, 10 or 8 right. or something, yeah. <laughs> Here's a 3-0. Right down the middle at 90 miles an hour, 3-1. Hey, did you see the other day, by the way, the Padres in the spring training game started, well, 9, there was a shock, but 7 of the 9 were former shortstops and it could have been eight and nine if they if they would have started nola or if nola was still there but would have started by no play you know i would say that that's crazy but listening to all these college coaches talk about how that's what they want to recruit the best athlete on the field usually the shortstop let's bring them in here and maybe the big league guys feel the same way man we're just give me the best athlete and we'll find a spot yeah That one's lifted in the air, but it'll get out of play. Great crowd tonight at Condren Family Ballpark. That's an awesome ballpark. Let me get the berms that everybody can sit on. You've got Adirondack chairs out in center field. Um, man, they show up, and it makes sense. One of the most consistent programs in the country since Sully got there 17 years ago. They list capacity at 7,000. But they packed in over 8,000 in that super regional against South Carolina last spring and set an on-campus Florida college baseball attendance record in the process. And uh, to say that they were due a new baseball facility at Florida would have been an understatement. It took a while. Yeah. And there's the walk. Boy, nice job at the plate there by Ty Evans, who... 
was up 3 0 in the count and fouled off a bunch of pitches. He fell off all fastballs, though, and I'm surprised Armstrong came back with a breakable. I mean, Link said it. He's controlled them all tonight, but um, it come three straight fastballs, got it back to 3 2, got the foul ball, and, and then loses him on the breakable ball right there. So, strikeout that goes to the backstop, then a 3 2 walk, and that will be it for Andrew Armstrong, but it is his longest outing of the year. He'll work three plus innings, three hits, three strikeouts, and a walk. He'll turn it over to the bullpen when we come back. It's into that midweek starter role if you don't have to extend him during the weekend. Charles has not pitched a bunch this in his Florida State career. Just as few innings this year came from North Carolina. That stays up in the zone two and one the count. It's a fastball that can get into the mid 90s too but since coming in the game right here against shell now three straight sliders. First one landed the last two have missed. There's 94 for you fouled back two and two. Six up in the zone. Two on, nobody out here for the Gators trying to scratch a run or two across. Lifted in the air. Shallow right center. It's going to drop for a base hit. They will be loaded. Everybody kind of hung around their base just because that ball was in a no man's land situation. So no run scored, but the bases are loaded. It's a pretty good piece right there, too, because it's it's a 3-2 slider and a good one, but it's just hitting a spot that nobody can get to. Tibbs pulls up right at the last minute, makes sure he can glove it. Everybody moves up 90 feet. The Gators trailing by seven, but they've got the bases loaded. Nobody out here in the fourth. Chance for Dale Thomas. To do some damage. Dale's average has dipped below 200 this year. Now at 195 after a fly out in the second inning. Strike two and one. <laughs> Lifted high in the air. Out to left field. Ferrer gives way to Ross, who will make the catch, and his throw will go to third, but that'll get the Gators' first run home. And it's seven to one now with two outs. Or excuse me, one out. Good piece by Thomas right there because it's mid 90s with it. I know he hadn't shown the ability to consistently throw the slider for a strike, but it's it's got plenty of movement on it. That time, fastball elevated. Thomas got enough, drives it deep enough, and it gets the Gators on the board. Should be two outs though, KP. They had the strikeout start the inning, but the pass ball. I always have an excuse, don't I? You cover for yourself. I'm impressed.
Charles coming out of high school was highly thought of. Matter of fact, he was drafted. In the 25th round, coming out of high school, decided to go to North Carolina for a year. Didn't pitch a whole lot there. Suffered an arm injury in 2022. Only pitched about an inning and a third. Well, he's been pumping at 94, 95 since he came in. I like the stuff. I mean, just look at pure stuff. It's 94 to 96. If you can work that fastball up in the zone, I think guys are going to have a hard time squaring it up. And the, the slider is real. It's, it's just been, it's almost had too much break so far. Okay, he really tries to pump up that fastball. He seems to elevate it at 96. Donate struck out his first time up at the second inning. Lays off that slider in the dirt. Strike three. Now that was, I mean, that was just a nasty one. You shouldn't throw that pitch. That's just too nasty. It, it's, I mean, the movement that he's had since he's come on it is, has been outstanding. Look at this. It, it, everybody's going to give up on that. The way that it starts, you could almost see Jackson West, the catcher, almost gave up on it. That glove started yeah. way high. He's and exactly he, right. He, he just kept coming just back. Did. He's like, hey, hey, hold on. <laughs> we got a chance at this one. If he can land it for a strike, and then have the ability to expand the strike zone later on. Man, this, this stuff plays. That's almost not fair. But here's a nine-hole hitter. Jalen Guy, who doubled in the third inning. Just his 13th at bat to start this game. Now has three hits. It was his first double of the year. Lifts this one down the line and right. It'll be... Into the grassy berm down the right field line. Just his sixth start of the year. Swing says our first base umpire Jeff Gosney. Three and one the count to a guy who's played a ton of baseball though. Even though it's his first year, Florida, he played 179. Yeah. Actually, played 183 games with 179 starts in his four years at Liberty. Lays off the fastball off the plate, and they are loaded again. I know hitters have been. Uh... Productive today. Guy on both times with a double and a walk right there. Jackson West, sack fly, and then walk came around to score. Watch this with Curlin, and we'll see if Florida State makes a move. Link Jarrett was on the horn before he went out there, so you would think he would. Curlin had a hand injury a few weeks ago, and, and now he's getting back to the point where he's finally close to 100%. But he's only walked one time this year, and he struck out 15. If you're bringing somebody out of the bullpen, I'm not throwing a first pitch fastball. It's something that spins to see if that aggressiveness continues. And if, if Charles can get there, Jack Caglione is on deck. I feel like this could be a critical at bat right here in this game.
sweeper in there for a strike to start off Curlin. Sweeper, look at you with the new school baseball nomenclature. I'm, I'm impressed. Dick. Well, it, uh, I mean, the pitch has been around for a while, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> This ball lifted in the air, deep to left. Out of here. Grand slam, Florida. Well, it was a little bit more patient that time. And for Curlin got the one he wanted for the left hander. I think for Curlin you're probably thinking you're going to see fastball change up instead he saw two straight breaking balls. But watch where this one ends up. Belt high right down the middle and. Kate Curlin who we said is coming back from that hand injury showed you last year the power that he has. Does it right there with one swing that changes this one in a hurry. A two run game and here is Jack Caglione. Jack swung at the first two pitches he saw his first two at bats and was retired and swings and misses on 96 miles an hour one and one the count now. Cags came into this one 429 on the season. This is 97 he's behind one and two. 96 97 but watch the release point and how he hides it back behind him that is not a comfortable at bat left on left. Just misses two and two the count. Caglione. Last year with 33 homers. Days alive. He had 90 runs batted in a year ago. Brown ball back up the middle. Caglione now one for three. That is keeping the barrel in the zone a long time. Even though the front side started to go right there for Caglione. Has he built to keep the barrel in there? Watch the front side. So it's left on left break ball. It's not comfortable. Front side goes, but the barrel stays long enough. Now it doesn't hurt that you're 6'5. But barrel stays in the zone long enough to plate coverage is enough to get barrel on it and keep this inning going. That's one that's going to beat just about any other left handed hitter in the country. Luke Heyman looks at 96 inside at the knees. Heyman picked up his fifth double of the year back in the first inning. Oh, did not have a good read on that pitch. 0 2. Gators have scored five runs this inning, but only one earned. Remember, the inning started with a strikeout. I got past the catcher, Jackson West. This one's lifted. Way up into the air. And now we'll get into the seats. No caught. What a catch. Thought that was going to back. Turning curves and, and didn't have some bumps at the beginning of the year. But makes you feel a little bit better when you're second baseman. It's a grand slam. It gets you back in a ball game. An All American type season last year for Kate Curlin. Off the plate. Can't two. Delivers this high and deep off the wall. And he'll stand up at second base. And for Cantu, that'll be his fifth double of the year and his second hit tonight. Dave, you talk about the experience and even though there's a bunch of transfers in this Florida State lineup, they've got a lot of Division I at bats. And Daniel Cantu was one of those guys right there. Reach base all three times, walked and scored in the second. 
Sigel the third now misses a home run by about five feet in right center here to start the fifth. Alex Lodis has walked and struck out at the plate. Lodis was named University of North Florida's freshman athlete of the year among all athletes at that school last season as a freshman. After putting together a fantastic campaign that saw him hit 306 with those 16 home runs. You're going to have to give that back to you. If you leave. Yes, you may. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? Yeah. It's really good, but it, we're, we're going to need that back. <laughs> Wonder if Reggie Bush will ever get his Heisman back. I think he, I mean the way things are going now in college athletics you got to give him his trophy back I would think he's got to give it back to school I was Reggie had to give it back him. when he he got in all kinds oh, of trouble yeah, yeah give Reggie Bush that's what well, never that's what I'm off. saying you think the NCAA will listen to us and give it back to him <laughs> Think they're watching right now. Probably later this week. Yeah. yeah well Dave and KP say give him his Heisman back. All right, good idea. Two and two the count. That is just off the plate. Now full of three and two. I just. I watched the glove more than anything, and, and on that one, the glove moves back a little bit. I think it did just miss. I think Jason Bradley's had an awesome zone tonight. I mean, there's been a few that will get the crowd into it that are close enough that look like they just missed. Fist fouled straight back. It's the fourth Gator pitcher of the night. Back again. By the way, the Seminoles have put up seven runs here tonight, obviously, but it is now the 15th straight game that they have scored seven or more runs as they continue to build on their school record. They have outscored their opponents by 120 runs this season. A little bit low. And Lodi. Draws the walk. They'll have him at first and second. Nobody out. That's a big time at bat. Lodis works at full, fouls the fuel off, takes one that's just outside of, or just off the outside edge to get it to 3 2. Now the Seminoles, after giving up a five spot in the fourth inning, have the first two on here in the fifth. It's ball one. You know, Sullivan is Go get it, 
And West at the plate, the sophomore catcher out of Tallahassee, Childs High School. And he will lay down the bunt, and it is an exceptional bunt. There is no play to be made. They are loaded and nobody out. They may be trying to give it out, but they put it right there. It's not going to be an out very often. Jackson West talked about a good the bottom of these two orders have been. He's got a sack fly. He walked in the fourth. Now squares early, puts it in a perfect spot, and that grass deadens it. If it ends up getting to the cut, it may end forcing it into foul territory, but it doesn't. The Knowles have them loaded with nobody out right here in the lineup turning over. Right back to the pitcher. They get the double play. Well, this will change it pretty quick. So the freshman did a good job. He gloves it, but it's not an ideal throw right there. And you can see where it takes Heyman. It actually takes him into foul territory. This is where a 6-5 left-handed first baseman helps you. Because that throw has to go all the way on the other side of the runner, out of the bullpen. And, and I think you bring Slater in right here. You probably want him to go two or three innings, but first and foremost, get you out of the jam. You'll see a lot of those. It's fastball slider. Fastball gets into the mid-90s, but he will lean on that slider if he's got it going. 2-0 the count to Cam Smith, who extended his hit streak to 19 games. Fouls that one back two and one. Fouls it back two and two. And Smith had an inside the park home run earlier this year against Michigan State. So stay on the ground at the shortstop, and the Gators get out of that mess. That could have been big time trouble. We've got another home run tonight from Jace Laviolette, his ninth of the season. Charlie Condens hit his 13th of the season for Georgia. Hitting started conference play. Condon has 13 home runs, and he's hitting like 580. Yeah, Georgia's one of those programs that have really come out of nowhere. Wes Johnson, new head coach in his first year, has got the Bulldog apparently headed in the right direction. George is sitting there at 16 and one coming into tonight. Texas A&M at 16 and 0. You knew A&M could always hit it. They just needed a, a few arms to go along with it. And it looks like they've got that. They just need to throw strikes. I mean, last year they, they just could not throw strikes. This year they've thrown plenty of them. Two and two the count. Colby Shelton. Boy, what a pickup he was for this Gator team. Fouls that one off. Yeah, he's been huge. I tell you what, he's been good at short. And I think that was the only question with Shelton is, can he handle the shortstop position? You know he's going to hit. You know he's going to hit a bunch of home runs. He's got nine already himself. But he has been, I wouldn't say outstanding at short, but he's he has not hurt them at short. That's for sure. And I think he's a corner guy when he goes to pro ball. And he is draft eligible. He's a draft eligible sophomore. And should hear his name called pretty early this year in the draft. You mentioned Charlie Condon. He tied Charlie Condon last year for the SEC freshman home run record. Both those guys blasted 25 of them in their rookie campaigns, but this time around, Dorsey wins the battle. Yeah, second strikeout of the day for Shelton, just the last time he reached base. This is not a comfortable look for a left-hander, and he got a piece of it, but Jackson West holds on for the strikeout.
Ty Evans. 3.39. How's that one back? One and one to count. He hit 400 in the College World Series last year, but 239 overall when the season ended to show you how hot he got down the stretch. I guess that's where you want to get hot, right, in Omaha? Yeah. <laughs> you can do whatever you want during the season, but if we get to Omaha and you hit 400, we like you a lot. That, that works out well. He had a game-winning home run against Florida State last year in the eighth inning. A lot of these, you see a lot of these rivalry matchups now. A lot of these teams taking a weekend early in the season and playing one game at each home park and then playing at a neutral site, usually a minor league ballpark. But Florida State and Florida still going with the traditional, just kind of one game this week, wait a couple of weeks, play another game, and they will Did play they a third to? game in Jacksonville. Yeah, that's what I thought. They play, uh, play in Jacksonville during the year. But a lot of these teams like Florida, uh, South Carolina, Clemson, they'll just take a weekend. Yeah. Georgia Tech and Georgia take a weekend. I kind of like that. I like that. One, one, and one, spread it out over the course of a weekend. You know, Florida does that with Miami, so that might prevent them from doing that with Florida State. That's just a, that's just a lot of early season baseball against some powerhouse schools. Line to third, caught by Cam Smith. This feels like an important inning defensively for Florida State. Obviously, it's been a good start. This ball's hammered. Cam Smith probably didn't have to jump, but you're expecting that ball to maybe go a little bit higher. But they put five on the board. The Gators do in the final in the inning before this. Seminoles load them up, don't get anything. Now two quick outs in their half of the fifth. 94 from Dorsey in there for a strike. Out of shell nut, one for two. It's average sitting at 296 now. What well, just missed inside. Boy, Jackson West held that there just an extra second or two, maybe. Jason Bradley might give it a thought. Still one and one to count. Bound straight back. Shillnut actually started at Santa Fe Community College just down the road from the University of Florida. Went there as a two-way player, as a freshman. Went three and three on the mound with 12 saves. But gave up pitching as a sophomore just to lock in at the plate. And he is just about 30 minutes, screw up 30 minutes from Gainesville in Lake City, Florida. Whoa. Hit the bull. Hey, see hey, that very often. Hey, Hank. <laughs> he actually shook to this, too. And Florida State has the wristbands on, which means the call's coming from, from the dugout. That time, Dorsey looked at his wristband, took the glove across his chest to shake, shook to that one, but missed by a bit. Oh, my. Called strike three. Inning is over. Shell nut. This a close game. at seven to five as... We move to the top of the sixth inning. Slater on the mound for the Gators. And he'll start things off with James Tibbs, the third. The three, four, and five hitters coming up for the Seminoles. That one's fouled out of play. Again, FSU. Has some serious offensive power, and here is Tibbs lifting one out of here back in the fourth inning. A three-run shot. This one stays on the ground. Kind of a no-man's land. Nice little scoop to Slater from Caglione, and that'll be the first out of the inning. Well done by Florida.
Yeah, that's that's a good play right there because for Slater, the route to first has to be direct. If, if you go deep, you're not going to get there in time. So he goes straight towards the bag. If you can glove it, great. You take it yourself. If not, get there. Now you're a first baseman. Caglione with a perfect flip, and they get him by a half step. I mean, Ferrer. Fielded by Thomas, and Kags can't scoop that one. And Ferrer will be safe at first. It should go as an infield single, but that's that's two kind of swinging bunts. Tibbs did it once, and they got him. This time down the third base side, Thomas played it great. The throw's just a little bit low, and for Caglione, that backhand pick is just a little bit tougher than if he has to get to the go to the forehand side off the top of his glove. And Florida State's got another base runner. Yeah, they're going to score that a hit. KP, that ball is just mashed off the bat of Drew Ferro. Into the corner it goes. Seminoles will hold up the runners. It'll be second and third. Boy, Jaime Ferrer was coming around third base. He was thinking he was going to be waived. He had to put the brakes on in a hurry. Yeah, Ty McGahee was about a third of the way down that third base line, waiting as long as he can to see. But this is a breaking ball that's going to come right back in to the barrel. And Ferro was seeing it well. Double, single, double tonight for the kid that grew up a diehard Seminoles fan. Dad played there, started at UCF, but now his first game against the Gators. He's got three hits, and the Seminoles have two more in scoring position. First pitch out to center off, off the bat. Of Dingus is a sacrifice fly, and the Seminoles will add another run to their total. They lead it by three now, eight to five. And they will intentionally. The runners at first and second. Low decent walked and scored, struck out, and then walked again back in the fifth. Lifted high in the air. Long run for Evans. That'll be just fouled by about a foot. <laughs> Lodis was giving this a look. He wasn't sure if it was going to stay fair. Then he wasn't sure if it was going to stay in the ballpark. But foul by about a foot and a half down the right field line. He's put together some really good at bats today. Barrels this one out into right center. Nobody's going to catch it off defense. It goes Jalen guy will pick it up but a run scores. Here comes another run. A two RBI double for Alex Lodis. RBI's 15 and 16 and his third double of the year. But the approach of this Florida State offense and Lodis in particular, he's walked twice, just missed extra bases down the right field line, but continues to use the right side of the field. Fastball, probably middle in. It was leaking back, but he got the barrel to it, drives it out to right center, deep enough to drive in two more. And Florida State has answered back, added three in this inning. A little Heisman pose. Maybe he heard the conversation about Reggie yeah, Bush. Heard you oh, or he heard you talking about Charlie Ward. Or Charlie Ward. Fastball that can get up 94 95. A little bit different look. Has some cut to it, but obviously haven't been out there a whole lot yet. 
First pitch at 90 down in the zone facing Jackson West. Left handed hitting catcher. Averages at 429. Lifts that one in the air. Out in the shallow right center. Caught there by Ty. Florida State is their one two. Leiter and Arnold will match up with anybody in the country, and you combine that with this offense, and they can be dangerous. Well, just when you thought the Gators might have had a little momentum, they cut this game to a two-run game, seven to five. They had Florida State had bases loaded, nobody out last inning, and Gators were had an opportunity to kind of get a little momentum going, and then all of a sudden Florida State comes back. Get some separation. That one's lifted out to center field. Ross there to make the catch for the first out. And Dorsey's done a nice job out of the bullpen. Inning in two thirds, couple of hits, two strikeouts, no walks. And junior college transfer that Link Jarrett called out when we were asking about his bullpen. So this is this is one that gives you a little bit different look. We saw fastballs up to 96 when he came in. It's it dipped down a little bit, but he's done a good job of filling the zone up too. And 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 is eaten outs in the middle of this game. Around the SEC, Georgia leads Iowa. Iowa's played a pretty SEC heavy schedule. They went to Ole Miss. They played Auburn down in Jacksonville. Georgia leads at 8 5, kind of with a home run in that. Ole Miss, Ole Miss wins on the road, beats UL Monroe 5 3. Tennessee scored 13 again. They're kind of a similar offense to Florida State. They are scoring a ton of runs, hitting a ton of home runs. Donate the designated hitter looking for his first hit tonight. He had a full count. Swing and a miss on 94. It's simple right there. Just stay with the fastball. Works himself back to a 3-2 count. Dorsey just grabs that four-seamer. Ball that's probably off the plate right there. But third strikeout in the last two innings for the left hand. Laviolette hit another one, by the way. Two on the night. The first one was 470 to straightaway center. The second one went over the seats and right. <laughs> That A&M team will be in Gainesville next weekend, and it looks like they will be undefeated when they show up. That's a pretty good offensive matchup. I mean, you got Laviolette. Obviously, Caglione, Shelton. Could be some firepower in that one. Lift it in the air to right. James Tibbs is there to make the catch in a clean inning for Dorton. Gainesville, Florida to lead the Gators 10 to 5 as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Top of the lineup for the Seminoles. Yamez Ross. 0 for 4, but did reach on an error. Sophomore out of Melbourne, Florida, hit right Ooh. below got him right the armpit. Is. Oh. A 
think he was thinking breakable. I kind of started to go out there, and then at the last minute, there's nowhere to go. And that two seamer is just. It's coming right back into the left handed hitter. There's nowhere Ross can go to get out of the way. And that one hurts. That is all rib. Ross has locked himself into that center field spot. Finished the year last year as a freshman hitting a 12 game hit streak, which was the longest for an FSU freshman since uh, the great DJ Stewart had a 17 game hit streak as a freshman. Ground balls. Problem is, if that sinker doesn't sink and it's up, that's when it gets to be really hittable. And therefore, a strike at 91. Look at Cam Smith in the box. Because of that low three quarter arm angle and the fastball is going to come into him, he's back and I mean, he's almost a foot length further back than he was earlier in this game. And that's why. That's the one he thinks he's going to get. Now, what can get him is if you come back with a slider. It's hard to cover the outside part of the plate, especially if that slider takes it off the plate, given how far he is off the, the, the dish right now. Seminole third baseman behind 0 and 2. That one's up in the zone. Cam Smith went up to the Cape over the summer and ended up being a Cape Cod All-Star when he hit 341 with 14 doubles and six home runs. Let me get you some confidence coming back to campus. Ross is at first base after being hit by a pitch. Did he go? No swing, says Jeff. I think that's right. I don't think he went right there. I think <clears throat> when, when pitches are called from the bench, the one thing you can't tell is how close a guy is to home play. And in this spot, you got to, at some point during the at-bat, they got him. That's that snap tag that Caglio can do so well. And most guys that throw from that arm angle do not have a great pickoff because he used to throw them down below. But this time, great feet right there. They're expecting potential with one out, three, two count. Ross is going to be on the move. He takes one step, and it was one step too many. Well, that was a quick two outs, a pickoff, and a strikeout. You can see when Purnell is right. I mean, this is tough for any right-hander to hit. Watch where it starts and where it ends up. It's that gyro spin that is just going to take off. It starts over the middle of the plate. It ends probably six inches off the plate. And even after moving so far towards that third base dugout, Cam Smith still can't get to it. James Tibb for the three-run homer. His eighth of the year. And now Tibbs will do the opposite. The lefties are going to climb on the plate. The righties are going to back off the plate. Tibbs trying to get that two-seamer before it runs all the way off the plate away from him. <laughs> Lifts this one in the air out to left. Shell Nutt is there to make the catch. He electrified this crowd. He'll face Dorsey and a big swing and a miss, 92 miles an hour. Curlin, the 5'11 sophomore out of Tampa, Florida, looks at strike two. Hard to believe he should be a freshman this year. I think overlooked in some of his stories from last year was the fact that he yeah. reclassified and when he should have been a senior in high school, he was playing second base for the Gators. Time power out of that frame, man. I don't think he's going to see a slider here. Maybe a changeup, a whole lot of fastballs, but I'd be shocked if he throws him another slider. See that Foxy on his uh, elbow pad there? Foxy? His middle name's Fox.
Do you have anything with your middle name on it? No. <laughs> Me either. No. That was wrong. Threw him a good slider. Yeah, that was down. There was no chance that one's going to leave the ballpark. Just didn't get a piece of it. One and two, the count. Dorsey up to 49 pitches now. Stayed up in the zone and got him. Strike out. Second time, Curlin has gone down swinging. And you got to remember about this Dorsey outing that he gave up the grand slam. I mean, he came in when he gave that up. It was a two run game. Since then, he hadn't hardly given anything up. Keg Leon had the single to follow. After that, he set down everybody. Now, eight in a row. Yeah, that was the second pitch of his appearance as the grand slam from Curlin. But he's got a guy right here that can do some damage. Jack Caglione singled his last time up. He's one for three tonight. He had a couple of first pitch. He had a pop up in the first and then a fly ball out to center field in the third. We're going to have a little discussion on the mound before we get to Jack Caglione and Link Jarrett coming out there. And that I wonder if that might be it for Mr. Dorsey. Caglione on the road. Start to 93, oh. the knees. This is real stuff, and Link Jarrett was talking about it too. Freshman lefty, fastball can be up to 95. It is a real swing and miss breaking ball. But he's facing one of the premier hitters in the country right here. Ground ball to the right side, just foul, so he's out in front 0 and 2 now. Rowan's mom cheered at Florida State where she won a national championship there. Cousin, her cousin Taylor Holman won a soccer national championship with the Seminoles back in 2018. For foul ball. I'm guessing there's a lot of garnet and gold in that <laughs> house. Not a whole lot of choice. No. Where he was going. That was close to hitting Dagley. He wasn't moving either. He wasn't going anywhere. I mean, he was okay wearing it right there. Well, look at his lower half. I mean, that is a massive is human being. Not a small human. Slot. Strikeout. Well, welcome, freshman. Come into this spot. Now it helps you get a five run lead. You know, you don't have to be too perfect, but I was impressed. He goes fastball, fastball to get ahead. Caglione fouls off a breaking ball, fastball to the backstop, and then throws the curveball exactly where he wanted to right there to get the strikeout. Yeah. 95 up in the zone, chased there by Luke Heyman. Luke doubled his first time up, but hit into a double play and then popped up in foul territory. Well, there is some life in this fastball. <laughs> yeah, you, you bring two lefties in back to back with totally different looks, but neither one of them are comfortable for either side, lefties or righties. Ninety-three. Aiming out in front. Now there, there is something too. Hudson Rowan, you start looking at some of his high school numbers. He had 71 strikeouts in 32 innings and then had a season ending injury. He finished as the state's 6 a strikeout leader.
Yeah, I'm just not uh, having uh, having a son play high school baseball right now and, and watching a lot of high school baseball. I'm thinking there aren't a lot of guys hitting his stuff. No, there's not a whole <laughs> lot to look like this. No. Nope. Two and two for the Gator catcher. That one's down in the dirt. No swing. Three and two the count. Gators put up school record 54 wins last year. They went 36 and 7 at Condren Ballpark. I think that one might have hit him. I think it did. If it did, it just got. That was ball, ball four anyway. Yeah, so yeah. makes you feel as better. A pitcher, in your, in hey, your as a pitcher, would, yeah. Would you rather have yes. the hit by pitch than the walk? Yes. Yeah, hundred percent. I'd rather hit them all and walk nobody. Uh. Colby Shelton, a couple of strikeouts, looking for his first hit. Colby came in at 356. His average has dipped down to 339. Ten doubles. But the Bama freshman home run record. He and Charlie Condon tied the SEC freshman record for home runs. Matter of fact, the Alabama record for freshman home runs, he shattered that by seven. Well, you go back to Alabama season last year with all the turmoil that happened and they were still able to win ball games. I mean, it was an impressive job by those guys just to stay afloat. You lose your coach in a kind of a betting scandal in the middle of the year. Two and two the count. Well, now Rob Vaughn's come in, takes the head job, and Alabama's in an unbelievable start. All this while losing Shelton, losing Luke Holman, who's been the undisputed ace for LSU so far, and Alabama just keeps on winning. Swing and a miss, and Rowan fired. Their fifth option tonight. 10-5 ball game as we move to the top of the eighth inning. Jaime Ferrer looks at 94. Just off the plate. By the way, great crowd tonight. 8,142 on hand. Again, they list capacity at this place for 7,000, but there is plenty of room to jam them in in the outfield and the berms, the grassy hills along the sidelines. And it's the largest ever for a Florida Florida State matchup in Gainesville. How great is that? I mean, it's it's a Tuesday night in March. And we got over 8,000 to watch a midweek game. Four straight pitches off the plate. Then and out a bit. Drew Ferro. A couple of doubles tonight. How about his evening at the plate? A couple of doubles, a single, three for four. Jordan Williams will pinch row for Jaime Ferrer. Drew Ferro's average, by the way, has crept up to 413. That one out of play. One and one the count. 
his home runs are going to come too, especially in that ballpark. I mean, the, the, the pull side in that ballpark is a great place to hit for a left handed hitter. And again, last year hit 15 his freshman year, just one so far this year, but he's got three hits tonight. Team best 11 doubles now. That is five more than the next closest competitor on the team. That's James Tibbs. Tibbs, though, makes up for it with his eight home runs to lead the team. Throw down to second. And Williams in there with a stolen base. I think for a lot of freshmen when they get into Division One baseball, the one thing they haven't had to do as much is hold guys on. And you, you'll see teams, especially early in the season, um, run on freshmen a little bit more than others because of that. That one is sliced out to left. Nice catch there by Shellnut as that ball was spinning away from him. First out of the inning. I think we talked about it earlier, but Williams now three for three on the year in stolen bases. Florida State as a team is 25 of 26. And they didn't have a stolen base attempt last weekend. I mean, we'll yeah, see remember, if that continues when they get into to ACC play. But <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> remember, Link Jarrett said, not a great running team. Yeah. 25 of 26. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's like anything in this day and age, I guess, with any, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, name the sport, with, with the transfer portal and so many new faces every year. And you, I guess even a coach, you may be able to go get some guys you know that had good years somewhere else, but they didn't have a good year for you. So you don't really know what you have as Williams tries to steal third, and he does so. Ball gets away from the third baseman, Thomas. I'm sure this... This might get the Gators dug out, a little riled up, stealing second and third, up 10-5 in the eighth. Oh, come on. It's five run lead in the eighth? Come on. You don't, you don't call, especially in this game, you're, you're not calling the dogs off here. All right. That may get I'm you riled saying, up. I'm not saying I wouldn't run. I'm just saying up, some guys in the dugout might be going, okay, hot shot. With my speed, I'm just running all the time. A guy like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Green light, green light. Right. Rolls now with two more tonight. 26 of 27 on the year. Who, who got thrown out? I feel like we need to do that. Jackson West. Jackson He's a West. That doesn't yep. count. That doesn't yep. count. <laughs> Catchers <laughs> getting thrown out doesn't count. <laughs> but Jackson does have a stolen base, though. Three and two the count. Well, that misses way off the mark. Gets all the way to the backstop, and Williams holds up at third base. So it'll be at first and third with one down. That's a good read, and that, that's probably talking before the game about the backstop because there's certain places, if there's a pad back there, you're going every time. But at Florida's ballpark, that one can come firing back like it did right there. And good job by Williams not to take a chance right there, especially up five. Fastball at the knees to Cantu. Cantu has reached base all four times tonight. Two walks, a single, and a double. Cantu has raised his average up to 360. Getting in the seventh spot in this lineup.
That one is off the heel of Clemente, and that one scoots into the outfield. Had to be chased down by the Gators, and that'll get a run across. Well, that was a strange play. That ball just kind of popped up off his heel. Yeah, and then I, I think Shelton felt like the only chance he had, which he's probably right, is, is to barehand it. But that one's going to be spinning really weird. How about Dingus in the heads-up base runner? I mean, he was locked into Shelton the entire time. And the minute that ball got past his bare hand, Dingus didn't hardly put the brakes on at all. He ends up at third base. Knowles had another one, and now there's still two more on with one out. Lodi steps in. So the slider off the plate. Last time up, Lodi's doubled, picked up a couple of RBIs. Lays the bunt down. Fielded there by Clemente. Safety right there just to add another one. And Lodis had, had squared earlier in the at bat. Took one. It was out of the zone, which you could do when it's a safety. That time got it to a spot that there's no way Clemente can get that lead runner. And Florida State adds another one. Seminole showing you a little small ball. A couple of stolen bases this inning. Safety squeeze down the line. And here's Jackson West, the catcher. He laid down a perfect bunt back in the fifth inning. I think when you get done with this, and regardless, who ends up winning the game. But if you're Kevin O'Sullivan, you look back on it. Florida State scored 12 runs. Six of those runs reached via the walk. And, and that's the biggest thing that you're going to fight when you're throwing a bunch of freshmen out there. It's just the inability to throw strikes, and it is it has hurt them tonight. Catch there made by Guy. But 12 start off with Ty Evans. Five, six, and seven. Shellnut and Thomas to follow. Strike at two and two. Have you ever umpired at any level? Have you ever umpired, Dave? I I, I in, umpired a couple of intramural softball games. Does that count? No, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Slapped out the right field. You asked. No. Just the correct honest. answer. No. If that's what it was, the correct answer would have been no. I have. Oh, okay. Sorry. As opposed to what you just gave, but okay. it takes a special soul to go out there and know that you're going to get booed and yelled at the entire night on borderline calls when a guy's throwing 94 miles an hour, that the difference is like an inch or two as to whether or not Trackman says it's a strike. But that, yet the guy sitting in the 13th row that's four deep knows exactly where it was. Yeah, I've always appreciated the guy down the first or third base line that's yeah. over the dugout. <laughs> Giving the umpire grief over a called strike or not strike. 
That ranks up there with me with one of the all-time greats. You see it in, in, in a lot of uh, summer ball, two umpire type situations, high school baseball, when there's a left-handed batter in and nobody's on and they want to check swing <laughs> and they check to the first base umpire. <laughs> right. He's got I, such I've a never great quite, look at it. I've never quite, they can't, he can't even see. Never quite understood that one. Ninety-four. Well, Jason Bradley's a pro, and I think he's I think he's been pretty darn good tonight. How about ninety-five and another strikeout. How about the confidence to attack with a fastball? And and listen, it, it helps me through ninety-five. I mean, it gives you a little bit more confidence, but. When he came in against Caglione, it was two straight fastballs to get ahead 0-2. And, and since then, the freshman has leaned on the fastball, and the breaking ball is real. I mean, we saw it on the strikeout to Caglione, but he's relied on that fastball to try to get ahead. We talked about Florida trying to find their key guys out of the bullpen that are freshmen. Well, I, I think Florida State found one tonight. Gator third baseman looking for his first hit against the freshman Hudson Rowan. He's up to 28 pitches. Well, now it's 3 0. Strike at three and one. That's in there for a strike. Three and two now. That one may have been a little like off. a good. <laughs> you like, like it? a good couple inches off the plate. Yeah. That one is buried on top of the plate, so there's the walk. So now first and second with one out. So Link Jarrett out to the mound, and you know what that means. Seminole is going to the bullpen one more time, but for Hudson Rowan, he gets three strikeouts. Gives up one hit and a walk. Yeah, and I think it's a good time pitches. to go get him, too. I mean, you, you could see the. the Today, the designated hitter stepping in. Strikeouts tonight for Donay. Wow. He said it with Rowan. I'll say the same thing with Lauk, man. Coming in, trusting that fastball, and, and he hadn't been in there a whole lot this year, but he's thrown about 80% fastball. So if you believe short sample size, you're going to get a lot of them. And Donay saw four of them right there. That last one probably a little bit up and out of the zone, but low three quarters with that fastball that seems like it's rising, but just stays at the top of the zone is not an easy pitch to center up. Oh. 
Here is Jalen Guy, doubled his first time up tonight in the third inning. Hitting ninth in this lineup, walked and flew out. That just misses 2 0. Oh. Lauk, young man out of Plainfield, Illinois, was the number one ranked left handed pitcher coming out of that state. on that left bicep area. And for Lockall, fastball is this one. Wasn't even close. I think he was trying to throw it away. That time just held onto it too long. It's up guy, but the bigger part of that is it turns this lineup over. Curland already one grand slam today. Another one right here gets the Gators right back in it. Kate Curlin, big swing, fouls it straight back. This is what it looked like in the fourth inning with the bases juiced. It's against the lefty. Dorsey slider came back in. Curlin ran it out into the bullpen and left, and that made it a two-run game. That changed the game really quickly. Slapped foul, 0-2 now. The book on Lauk so far is pretty simple. He's going to throw you fastballs. Throws you something else, you kind of tip your hat, but that's all he's thrown since coming out of the bullpen. When you uh, you got to think Lauk knows who's on deck. Jack Caglione. Oh, I'm I'm certain he knows who's on deck. Yes. Boy, buries that one. That's going to get a run home. Ty Evans steps on the plate. And I think Louch is trying to show him something else right there. Throws the slider, 0 2 count. You want to make sure you're not throwing a spot that you can get hurt, but buried it and then it pops straight up. West goes down to try to block. In fact, stays up to try to block it. That's exactly what you're supposed to do in that one, but it bounced even higher and he didn't drop to a knee. That hit about a foot and a half in front of the plate. So Jason Bradley says. Cade Curlin stuck his left arm out there. And he says that is a strike and rings him up. So remember, the rule right now is you don't have to move out of the way. But if you move to make contact with the ball and it hits you, it is a strike. So if there are two strikes and you do it, it's strike three. Gainer fans may not like this call. I think it's the right call. He sold it good at the end by peeling out, but I think there was enough movement towards it that Florida will challenge this, but I would be surprised if it gets overturned. It looked like he dipped that shoulder into it as he turned. So they're going to go to the uh, replay monitor. The move after was well done. Because I, I thought he moved into it enough, but then as he spin, if you spin, you're fine. If you spin, you're getting out of the way. It just looked like the elbow moved enough towards home plate to create contact. Again, it's the left elbow. Does it move towards the baseball? I think it did. I think this is one where you can make two arguments. If you're in the Florida State dugout, you say it did. If you're in the Florida dugout, you say he's spinning, trying to get out of the way. There's that little push I think there's the enough. plate. I think there's enough. I think this one stands. And 
again ruled on the field as he leaned into it, which would be a called third strike. So you got to have indisputable evidence to overturn the call. And that piece of it, I don't know if it's indisputable. I mean, before he spun, it definitely moved closer to it. Now, you can make the argument that he was going trying to potentially make a swing, but I, I not going to be popular at home, but I think it's the right call. It would be the end of the inning if this call stands. After review, the batter being intentionally hit by the pitch is out. Confirmed. So confirmed. Doesn't even stand. So obviously the home folks don't like it. But after further. He was going to pitch tonight regardless of score. Just get an inning in. Get ready to go this weekend because they're going to need him against AM and hope that this one helps get him right. Starts off Ross with a strike. Ross, the center fielder, 0 for 4. And he looks at strike two. Ross's average has dipped down to 327. That one sails. Up and away. Ross comes from a baseball playing family. His dad, Keith, played 10 years in Japan and Korea. We're going to miss, and he is done. One out. Well, it's a good step towards getting right right here. Neely just comes in and leans on the fastball. That time throws it right by Ross. First hitter he faces a strikeout. Cam Smith, two hole hitter, step into the plate. Singled in the fourth to keep his hit streak alive at 19 games now. Came in hitting 492. Average has dipped down to 478. He's in a slump. <laughs> Foul three and two. 97 from two. Neely right there. Cam Smith came in leading the country with 2.2 hits per game. off the foot of Neely and scoots past Caglione into shallow right and Cam Smith will wind up at second base. Well he now he needs to come up with a point two hit and he'll be right on his average. <laughs> <laughs> he hit it hard man good things happen. Cam Smith hits it hard a lot. We've seen this a couple times tonight off the spike and Caglione who's breaking to the bag can't spin and get it. Then it's hit so hard and it goes right off the bottom of that spike goes into right field and Cam Smith has two hits tonight. The last one a double off the pitcher. And now you get James Tibbs hit a three run homer in the fourth for his only hit tonight. Tibbs led Florida State last year with that 338 batting average and 17 home runs. 
He won the home run derby in the Cape Cod League over the summer. Three pitches, and he's walking back to the dugout. To foul one off, and Neely comes right back with that fastball, this time elevated. That's exactly where he wants to throw it against Tibbs. In a spot that really the only thing he can do anything with it is if he takes it the other way. But so often you see the hitter swing right underneath it like Tibbs did there. The Williams pinch hitting now for Florida State. Max, the sophomore out of Ormond Beach, Florida. Transfer from Alabama. Well, Neely with a nice. Bit of pitching out of the bullpen. Here he's. It's 12 to 6. As we move to the bottom of the ninth inning, Jack Caglione will lead things off for the Gators. 2, 3, and 4 coming up. Facing the lefty, Brady Lauk, the freshman. Evens a count at 1 and 1. Had up. They've uh, really pitched Caglione well tonight. He hasn't really been able to get extended on a pitch tonight. No, I mean, he flew out to center on a ball he hit pretty well and hit right off the end of the bat. If he barrels that, it probably leaves. Then singled in the fourth. To the count. Florida State trying to push it out to 15 and 0. Keep pace with A and M as the only undefeated teams left in college baseball and a called third strike. Well, Jack Caglione is not happy about that called third strike. A few parting shots for Jason Bradley behind the plate. I think Kanks has got to remember, he's going to have Bradley behind the plate a few times this year when he's on the mound. And, yeah, that, that one was probably a little bit off. Um, but you also want that when you're on the mound. Luke Heyman, the catcher. One hit tonight. Get into a double play. Popped up in foul territory, was hit by a pitch his last time. Two and one to count. Fouled out of play. Florida State has Notre Dame this weekend in Tallahassee. And then the following weekend, they will be on the road at 10th ranked Clemson. And that'll be out number two. I've been impressed. And it, it, I, I wasn't worried about the offense. I think the questions with Florida State were, is there going to be enough in the bullpen? And they're young. They're young in the bullpen, but it feels like there's some pretty good pieces. The other thing for them, too, is, I mean, they get Notre Dame to start. They go to Clemson. You get Louisville at home, who Louisville the last few years has not been the same Louisville team. They go to Boston College. You get Miami at home. Then it gets tough. You go to Wake, to Duke, NC State at home, at Pitt, who has looked better this year, and Georgia Tech at home. So the first half of the ACC season is... Well, it's 
It's not what Florida has in the SEC. Florida's SEC schedule to start is not easy, and this two-seamer looked like it uh, got that back elbow. That's the one that doesn't have any padding. Seminoles have struck out 15 Gators tonight, matching a season high for Florida at the plate. They also struck out 15 times against Miami when they took two of three from the Hurricanes. Of course, these clubs will meet again. The next time will be March 26th, the Tuesday night. And we'll wrap up the series April 9th. Shot foul, two and one to count. Two and two, one strike away from ending this one. I'd say Evans is sitting fastball. Yeah. <laughs> He's. He's yanked two of them about 60 feet foul each. Well, that'll get Shelton down to second base, and the count goes full three and two. to center field, long run, and that one gets past Ross. It's going to scoot all the way to the wall. That'll get a run home. And Evans going to try to turn the corner. He's going home. The throw, safe at the plate. A little excitement at least. Before this one ends, there's no reason to dive out in center field. And Diamez Ross can go get it, but and you get you got a six run lead in the ninth. Like that that has to stay in front of you. And I know the run that matters is still sitting in the dugout, but still, that's got to stay there. Ball's there in plenty of time. You can see it kind of rolling around in Jackson West's glove when he goes to make the tag ball pops out. Ty Evans got it inside the parker. But that's for a really good defensive center fielder, that, that's something you can't do right there. That ball has to stay in front of him. Well, unfortunately for Lau, that'll be the last pitch he throws tonight, but an inside the park home run. Don't see that every day. And guess what, Dave? We got a left-hander coming in. Shocking. Fifth of the night for the Knowles. We're going to go with Brennan, Brennan Oxford, the redshirt senior. Well, Evans, when he coming around third, KP, it looked like uh, the proverbial piano on his back, right about here. You get it. <laughs> I don't think there's any way you're going to get it. I, mean, I, I, I was shocked that he got the green light to go. The other guy saying, please drop it, was Ty Evans. Yes. <laughs> That's a home run. And so here's Tyler Shellnut with the bases empty.
Popped him up. He's going to stay in the infield. Rowe will make the catch. And after the inside the park home run, the Seminoles close it out. They win.